Hey everybody, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome to a video series where I showcase what I found to be the best in slot min max build for one of the 12 Midnight Suns heroes. I will also give a quick review of all the hero abilities to show what other potential fun build options the hero may have, or reveal the thought process that ultimately led me to the one and only best choice to min max said hero. Once we have given an overview of the hero, I will give a tier list rating in direct comparison to the other 12 heroes. We'll also mention what battle items and heroes synergize best with this build. This is a one of 12 part series. If you end up finding this video informative or helpful in any ways, please check the video description for a full playlist of my series for Midnight Suns. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's get into today's hero. It is time for the anti-hero DLC, Eddie Brock, AKA Venom. So this is another DLC hero. So likely going to be a lot longer than my usual reviews. So buckle up, grab yourself a snack and a drink because this one's going to be a doozy. Venom is my personal favorite character in the Marvel Universe, and I was super stoked about this hero's release. So it's no wonder I'm going to do an extensive hero review for him in today's video. But also, once again, thank you to everyone leaving wonderful comments about this series. I truly do appreciate it. Just want to throw this out there. I do have a Patreon if you do feel like supporting the show further from all the work that I put into the series. I know this series is almost to a close, but you guys have convinced me to do an extensive review on Hunter, and we still have two more DLC heroes, and hopefully I can come up with a few more things to sprinkle in along the way. So if you do decide to support through Patreon because you found value in this series, uh, hopefully I can bring something for you in the future as well. Getting back to the Venom DLC though, I already gave my thoughts on the extended story chunks when covering the Deadpool DLC earlier this week. So all I can really add to this is that I feel no different with Venom story bits. The story's short, still doesn't do anything to extend the end game or add any new and improved New Game Plus features or anything else to get excited about. The one thing that Venom DLC did add, however, that I want to talk about is the research that you can get to re-roll mission leaders. This is crazy important because we can take a Hydra counter attack wave based mission assigned to say Captain America or something and we can re-roll it into a Venom mission and these missions tend to be longer which means it'll grant Venom more EXP opening up more farming potential for leveling up heroes so this was the one thing that the DLC brought that I was actually pretty happy about and with this in combination with a certain build that I use on Venom this actually opens up a bonus Venom leveling guide that I'll be releasing later on this week. So talking more about Venom's playstyle, Venom was designed to be that of a damage dealer role. Much like Deadpool, Venom comes with a newly introduced game mechanic with his Ravenous stacks. So basically Venom starts with three stacks of Ravenous, each providing 17% bonus offense for a total of 51% more offense when at three stacks. The downside to this, however, whenever he plays an ability, he loses one stack of Ravenous. So he effectively starts off straight strong and quickly gets weaker. After three card plays, he's no different than a standard hero. However, his base level cards don't appear to be that strong compared to the other heroes, and he sort of relies on that Ravenous to be on par with the other heroes. The main way to regain Ravenous stacks is to regenerate them between turns, which I think is a terrible design choice in a game that incentivizes you to finish missions in the fewest turns possible. Also, the idea of Venom getting hungry and needing to feed his hunger, that does sort of make sense. Although waiting a turn to resolve his hunger problems is sort of like him fasting rather than actually being ravenous. I think he should be eating brains to restore ravenous stacks rather than going on a diet for a turn. <laughs> All that aside, luckily there are a few cards that either prevent ravenous stacks from being lost. The unfortunate thing is they don't actually work because <laughs> Firaxis failed to bug test their game yet again. And I will show you guys this and you'll probably see it in my footage when I use a card that's supposed to prevent ravenous. It actually does not. And I will be talking about those cards specifically specifically when we get to them later in the actual build breakdown. So our last resort is to use a free card that does restore one stack of Ravenous, which in theory isn't enough, but we will make it work in our current build here today. My overall thoughts on Ravenous is that the designer who made this should be fired. 
I'm kidding. Sort of, not really. <laughs> Let's break it down. I'm, ju I'm just Josh it a little bit. Let's break it down why it's fundamentally a terrible system. Each stack of Ravenous only granting 17% offense is really weak overall. And once he plays three cards, he's completely depleted. Think about Captain Marvel in comparison. She plays three cards and goes binary, gains 100% offense for the rest of the mission. Or look at Incredible Hulk as another example. He gains up to 200% offense when building up his rage stacks and he maintains those stacks much easier than Venom does with Ravenous. Deadpool is another and Fuego stacks build up quite quickly and provide massive benefits and he never actually loses them assuming you don't take any damage on him which is pretty easy to do. Moral of the story, most heroes get progressively more powerful to the factor of 1 to 200% offense whereas Venom gets a meager 51% offense and he fizzles out like a wet noodle almost instantaneously. We all know and remember Venom to be a hero with high endurance. Sure, he gets hungry and needs to eat a few brains eventually, but generally his prowess is so terrifying that even Spider-Man needs to cheese battles to get the edge over the might and strength that is of Venom. And in this game, Spider-Man simply can pop his free web slinger ability for 50% more strength and instantly becomes as strong as Venom with zero offense decay. Meaning Spider-Man is even stronger than Venom in this regard. That should not be the case in my opinion. So Ravenous sucks, and I believe it should have been designed with maybe five stacks, each providing 20 to 30% more damage for a total of 100 to say 150% more offense. And then the stacks should be renewed upon eating brains of the enemies for nourishment. And if this is a bit too overpowered in the testing department, make it so he doesn't start at 100% stacks. Instead, he has to build up to them from zero. This is a DLC hero after all, it can't hurt to make him a bit over the top and awesome for returning players who have already beaten everything. I digress though, I have learnt to make the Ravenous Sack system work in my favor in today's build, other than the fact that the two most important cards are still broken a week after release and no word of them being fixed. And what's worse is they either don't prevent the Ravenous Stacks from decaying as designed, or cause him to lose two stacks of Ravenous with using an ability card, which shouldn't be happening at all. That is completely a terrible bug. The system is completely broken on release, so we can either cheese our stacks back to full or completely forget the measly 50% strength altogether. So yet again, Ravenous system is awful, and maybe once they fix all the bugs with it and it's actually working as intended, then it turns out to be just okay. But putting all these card designs into building it up, preventing it, you know, all this, you know, regenerating them on the next turn, it's been so heavily over designed for just a meager 50% strength bonus that it's just kind of like the snake is eating its own tail. The system is way too heavily over designed for something that doesn't even make drastic results that make you feel good about playing with those systems. That's not really a good engaging game design mechanic, in my opinion. So that's the long winded discussion on the Ravenous system. Let's talk about his core kit just a bit. I got to admit, the bar was set high. I was super excited for this hero. And as I was starting to unlock these cards one by one, I started to scratch my head thinking, this doesn't seem like the badass Venom that I know and love. I kept modding the cards as they came in between each mission, tried to make them as powerful as possible going into each consecutive mission, and I honestly just felt like he wasn't delivering in the damage department like he should be. I started to get extremely worried at this point. Eventually, I unlocked everything except for his legendary Midnight Sun ability, and at this point I had concocted a build that was fully modded, but it was only somewhat okay-ish. But in my heart of hearts, I couldn't help but feel underwhelmed. And then, I unlocked his Midnight Sun's legendary ability. My whole world changed instantaneously at this very moment. So what it does, all of his cards become quick, 
draw a Venom card on KO for the rest of the turn. Meaning no need for Mark supports anymore. No need to mod his abilities with quick. No need for draw card mods. Time to revisit the body table and go full force on damage. All because of this legendary card. This changes everything. And this legendary ability is so broken that Venom quickly becomes the most broken hero in the game by far. <laughs> on top of it, we can empower him with overpowered, strengthened, and forget about the crappy ravenous mechanic as he'll already be at 150% offense and everything is quick and then everything is drawing cards and you're just gonna demolish everything. And in the case that we do get our ravenous stacks up, I guess that'll be 200% more offense. Not to mention we have methods of duplicating his legendary card, ensuring that he gets to use it for the second, third, and even fourth turn of a wave-based mission, making him literally an unstoppable killing machine every single turn so thank god for this legendary ability because i was about to write a super sappy sad review about this hero up until this card was unlocked well i made the most of him and he had a decent build up until this point but he was just an average b tier hero in my opinion and the legendary card brought him into s tier for sure i do however still have strong feelings about this being a poor design philosophy overall. Basically, the hero starts off with a crappy feeling ravenous mechanic that is so fundamentally not working and bugged. Not a good look for a new DLC that you just paid money for. Then his following card unlocks don't really synergize all that well together and are mainly designed to keep a crappy mechanic maintained, but then again, they don't actually work. Then the hero overall isn't really putting out that much damage and is dependent on other heroes and mods to assist him for being just okay. Progression wise, he's not really feeling fun to play. Then suddenly you unlock one single legendary card that not only breaks the hero into God tier, but synergizes energizes perfectly with all his other cards, enabling them to work once you mod them accordingly to the new legendary card, which was just unlocked. Basically forcing you to go back and redo all of the mods and rethink all of your current investments, essentially wasting your time and resources invested up until this card was unlocked. Huh. This results in the hero power feeling flat for majority of your game time, then spiking through the roof and breaking the roof suddenly. And it also means that the hero is 100% dependent on having this legendary card in their deck and fishing for that card at the beginning of every mission to actually be playable. It's simply poor hero design in my opinion. The silver lining in all of this though, it saved my broken heart from shattering completely. <laughs> and then sent me into overdrive with complete and utter enthusiasm to set out and make the most broken hero build in the game. I call that a save and a win, regardless of it not being proper hero design or proper progression implementation. Some could say that the spike of power has this cool wow factor moment, but I think the hero should wow us straight out of the gate and only get better as we progress. That's just my kind of thought thoughts and opinions uh, from a game design philosophy standpoint. Whether you disagree with it or not, uh, I, pr I feel pretty strongly about my argument. So all of that out of the way, let's finally talk about his tier list ranking in comparison to the other heroes. Without mods or his legendary card, He's pretty lame. He has a few cards that do have potential utility no matter what part of the game you are at. And we do have to include his legendary card here in consideration to his ranking because it is a part of his default kit, whether or not you use mods or not. So without his legendary, I would have placed him in the low C tier, but it is such a good card and it is a part of his kit. So I have to promote him into the B tier. With mods, things become a lot more tricky. Not only is his legendary insane and enables the rest of his modded cards, he still might not pop off without the help of supports helping him fish for his legendary card to get going or even battle items to really seal the deal on his damage. When doing these tier list rankings, we have to go into it with an approach that the hero is basically on their own. And with that in mind, he has a hard time fishing for his legendary on his own, but he still does pack a punch. So I place him one below Wolverine in the A tier because Wolverine can actually fish for his legendary ability using his three card draw skill card. 
that is something that Venom lacks. But if I could make a third tier list, talking about potential, once levels invested, paired with other supports, he's basically the best damage dealer in the game next to Hunter uh, at an absolute S tier, 100%. He's super broken, but you do have to pair him with the right heroes. I found a way to level him up insanely fast. And I'm gonna do a leveling guide later on in this week. And once we get like Venom to champion level 100 plus, he's gonna be less dependent on those heroes or those battle items or what have you. And he's pretty much just face roll things on his own. So I think he's a good investment and he actually levels up the fastest out of any other hero in the game. And that's why I have to make a whole video just about that alone. So, that's the overall summary for Venom. Let's go take a look at my build and recommendations for Venom, starting with my hero profile. Behold the glory that is my level 73 champion level Venom, ladies and gentlemen. I'm super excited about this video of this, this whole review after discovering his legendary ability. You can see from a lot of the footage that I'm using, it's absolutely nuts. Now I do want to make a disclaimer. All the footage that you guys are seeing in the background was generally captured when he was like level 30 and below. So if you think he's doing a lot of damage in my footage, well, he's doing in like a lot lot a lot a lot of more <laughs> and i intend to get him to level 100 so uh, ignore what's in my deck right now we're going to talk about things and switch it up a little bit let's talk, take a look at my hero profile here it is 440 enemies ko'd he's been on 33 missions he's level 73 and you can see i've gotten a good bit of use out of all of his cards minus web toss with two uses and spike burst with one use although i still do see some value in spike boot uh in, in, in spike burst and we'll uh we'll talk about that as we review all of his cards what's important here is the 33 missions together level 73 let's do a comparison my next closest hero to 73 it's probably Probably Captain Marvel, level 60. Pretty close. She's been on 70 missions. So that's less than one level for every one mission. But if we go back to Venom, he's a higher level and he's been on half the amount of missions. He levels up twice as fast. And I'm gonna do a whole video on this and how I uh, accomplish this and why I accomplish this and we'll break it down. It's definitely deserving of a whole video because there's a whole bunch of ins and outs that make this possible. Another interesting one, to look at is Deadpool. He's been on the same amount of missions as Venom and he's level 24. <laughs> that is, Venom levels three times faster than Deadpool. So forget about Deadpool, guys. <laughs> He's dead to me. So now that you've seen my hero profile, it's time to review the hero passive as always. We are Venom level two, 25% chance for attack cards not to con to not consume Ravenous. The first attack card played each encounter does not consume Ravenous. This uh, not consuming Ravenous with the first card allows you to play cards that prevent Ravenous being consumed on the next card played, basically allowing you to maintain those stacks uh, and that momentum in indefinitely however with all the bugs and stuff and things not working properly it's not really working as intended so i do think his passive is good for his personal kit like the mechanics of his kit this lends aid to that and the 25 percent chance to not consume ravenous i've seen it proc many 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 times it's it's a one in four chance it's pretty good the way i would have actually changed this though is a 25 percent chance to not consume ravenous and gain one stack of ravenous or reword it just a 25 percent chance to gain one ravenous stack you know it doesn't consume it he gains a stack so that if you weren't at full you're starting to build that up i think that would have been a lot more generous considering um how volatile the system is and how annoying it is and the fact that we talked about it that it's not even that powerful so his whole passive playing into the whole ravenous system kind of makes it feel like he doesn't really have a passive at all right the other heroes in the game they have a passive on top of their game mechanic this is a game mechanic that just assists his game mechanic. So it, it's it's a little bit of a downside where it's like, okay, like we're, we're sacrificing his passive or using his passive to make his mechanic less crappy. Well, again, to the top of the video, me talking about Ravenous being a very bad game design, it's such a bad game design that they had to make a passive to make it less shitty. <laughs> That's, that's literally it. It's like, well, why not just make it better and then make his passive do something else? Like, I don't know, he has a chance to bind people with like his, his symbiote goop. I don't know, there's a many different things you could do with this. I haven't really thought it through, but give me a few hours and I'll come up with something better. Overall though, it does make his 
ravenous system better or less crappy <laughs> and it's it's much needed it's very necessary all right let's move over to his stats at 73 he's got 1000 health and almost 200 offense he's getting more and more powerful and he's rapidly leveling so we've had discussions about offense in the past with like captain marvel where she goes binary and it doubles her offense and uh deadpool building and fuego stacks the same thing is true here with venom because we're getting that ravenous giving us 50 percent more offense 50 percent of 200 is going to be an extra 100 offense the kicker here is that with certain cards and certain abilities venom levels extremely fast and because he's rapidly leveling and 50 percent of basically he's gaining 1.5 offense every level instead of just one because he has that ravenous adding 50 percent however ravenous currently with all the bugs is pretty hard to maintain once it gets fixed you know you're probably watching this video months from now when it is fixed or maybe it doesn't get fixed i don't know it should hopefully be the case where he's actually rapidly getting stronger faster than other heroes plus he just happens to level faster than other heroes meaning he's probably the best investment in the entire game and we can bring him into limits where we're not going to need overpowered buffs uh battle item buffs or even support characters you will literally just bring him on his own on a mission and he'll probably just devour everything all on his own <laughs> the sky's the limit with venom just because he levels fast uh it's it's kind of crazy so let's talk about his other stats obviously we're gonna want his crit chance up to 50 percent we're gonna want his crit damage up to 75 percent and then pretty much everything else you don't have to worry about if you are playing with the uh spike burst you can consider getting some power and i do see some viability in having one spike burst in your deck we'll talk about that in a bit um but generally just his crit chances crit damage unfortunately for me i haven't been able to pump those out too much um, uh, but I, I hope to max them out eventually. By the time I get these to 50 and 75, there's he could be potentially level 200 with how fast he levels. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, but I, I would like to see his cards pulling as crits. And I'd like that crit damage to be 75%. And if I get there, guys... I'll make a sizzle reel of Venom and I will do some testing. Like what happens if we don't bring supports and we don't bring battle items? How much havoc can he cause when he's champion level 200 with max crit chance and crit damage? That'll be an interesting discussion for another day. If I ever get there, we'll see. Maybe guys, if you guys support me on Patreon, maybe I'll make it happen. <laughs> All right, let's talk about my build starting at the top with Lethal Embrace. If the target has full health, it does double damage. On KO, gain one strengthened is the mod for this. So this is a really interesting card because it's 283 damage plus 283 damage. Both of those levels, uh, both of those numbers level up independently. And that means basically for every one level you get, this gains two points or it, this gains double the amount of value. I'm not sure what the multiplier is here because we have 189 offense and it has 283 damage. Yeah, I don't really know what the math is on that but it's not one to one so if you gain one offense this will probably go up in like by three to five damage but that secondary tertiary stat in the apex will also go up by two to five damage or whatever so you know the fact that he levels up this card is gaining like a lot more value every single level and then we're adding 50 percent more damage with ravenous so by default this card says it does 300 damage plus 300 damage it's not showing the ravenous number so it's actually going to be 450, 450. So if you are hitting a full health target, it's straight up 900 damage at my current champion level. We add strength into that, and I, uh, I think it adds, what, another 50% of the base damage, bringing it up to just over 1,000 damage, maybe like 1,200 damage. It's hitting hard. You pull crit on that, and it's 2k damage. It'll one-shot anything in the game. <laughs> it's nuts now the reason i put on ko on strength uh, on, on ko strengthened is there's no other good card to put that on and in fact most of his cards you can't put them uh this i think this might be the only card that you can get on ko one strengthened other than maybe his uh heroics but that's a super big bad move to put that on there so one of the mods you could do is plus 50 percent damage on this to make it even stronger but that 50 percent damage does not apply the affix down below so it's it's not getting like massively crazy you need the extra strength in because it basically gives you double the amount of ravenous you know ravenous is 50 percent offense strengthened is 50 percent offense with the two of them combined you're at 100 percent and this this will just make him an overall killing machine and uh it, it's it's great to have next up is our tendril strike 
like. Now, I was messing around with this a lot. I have a lot of different cards that I played around with. Um, I can show you that really quickly. You can, can see just real quickly, like 50% damage there, reduced heroism there. I put like plus two heroism, plus taunt, free, quick, draw last attack played. Uh, you know, I've messed around with a lot of his abilities and I had to redo them because uh, unlocking that legendary card. So ultimately with Tendril Strike, I landed on draw a card for each KO. Talking about Tendril Strike on its own, it's a chain too quick. This is the only chain attack card in the game that is quick. And in fact, with a chain card, you cannot mod a chain attack card to be quick. So when I first unlocked this, I was like, that's kind of crazy. Like this is a chain attack card and it's his quick attack card. And I, th I just thought that was like really cool. The downside to this, however, is you can't mod it with plus strength and you can't mod it with uh, a bunch of important mods that you would normally use. It just because the chain attack does not have a, a pool choice like the other cards do. So it limited, it has limited modding potential. And I've ultimately landed on draw a card for each KO. Meaning if you use this quick attack to take out two minions, you're going to draw two cards. That's like tremendous value. You can mod this to be chain three, but it doesn't really get much value out of it. It's not really worth it. Um, I could, you know, argue about why it's not good all day and why draw a card for each KO, it brings so much more value. I did notice with this draw a card for each KO later on, it started bloating my hand. Like I had way way too much cards and I was getting cards for the other heroes that I was playing with and I didn't actually want their cards anymore. Once you get him going and you got all of his stuff going, you got his <laughs> a simulation played and you've got him strengthened, you basically don't want your heroes to draw cards. You just want ve more Venom cards. Unfortunately, you cannot get draw a hero card on this. It just won't work. You can get draw a card, draw a card for each KO, but you can't get draw a Venom card. So the only other option to go is the plus two heroism taunt, but he doesn't really need the heroism and, and we'll review that. But um, I also play a hunter that doubles heroism gains. If you don't do that, I'll just show that real quick. Call to arms, two of these in your deck doubles the amount of heroism gains. If you're not running a hunter that does that, there's an argument to be said that the plus two heroism on Tendril Strike is better because this generates three. And we definitely need heroism to play his heroic abilities. I, I am running a hunter that does have double heroism and I find that I have so much heroism on this hero the card draws just nice the second reason you want this draw a card for each KO you need to fish you need to fish for assimilation you need to fish for your other hero cards with our hunter we want our holy gift so we can duplicate his legendary ability we need to fish for that if we're using Dr. Strange we want to fish for astral meditation we can get our combat items back so fishing is necessary right out of the get-go and a tendril strike is gonna enable you to do that. What's even greater, we're going to jump ahead in the build to Symbiote Bind. Symbiote Bind. Apply Bind, which is great value all on its own. The enemies would lose a turn. They can't do anything. Draw a Venom card for each attack played on the target this turn, and I've modded it to be free. What this card doesn't say, and it's likely a bug that I hope they don't fix, whenever you play a card against that bound target, you draw a Venom card. That's phenomenal. What it doesn't mention is, it's not just a card. It's whatever they take damage. So if you just pick up a crate and throw it at that enemy, you draw a Venom card. You knock back a box into that enemy, you draw a card. You blow up a nearby barrel on that enemy, you draw a card. So what you want to do is you want to bind the enemy that's surrounded by the most environmental destructibles and then just start blowing them all up on that enemy and you're going to draw a Venom card, draw a Venom card, draw a Venom card, draw a Venom card. And it just, uh, you'll, you're going to get that assimilation card really, really quickly. What's great is we could use our tendril strike we get a chain two so we chain it on a minion so that minion dies which triggers the quick effect meaning we get the card play refunded then the second chain we run it over to our symbiote bind meaning we hit that target and play a card on that target meaning we draw another venom card so the tendril strike is going to ko an enemy which means we're going to draw a random card could be venoms could be one of our allies but the one that we hit with the symbiote bind is going to draw a venom card so now our tendril strike is drawing two cards but one of them is venoms now there's a bug with symbiote bind in theory the way that this should work is if I bound two targets and hit them both with a tendril strike, one on both of the bound targets, in theory, both of those symbiote bind characters should be drawing a card each, but it's broken, bugged, and it's not working properly. So 
I thought that was pretty disappointing, and I just wanted to point that out to you guys. If it doesn't get fixed, um, you know, you might start thinking, oh, like if I chain attacks on multiple symbiote binds, I'm going to drop. No, it just gives you one card. So you can only get value from symbiote bind one at a time, which is why I only have one in my deck. You can bind multiple enemies. So I could bind this guy over here, this guy over there, and start throwing objects at them and using attacks on them. The more bound enemies that you can hit, the better. So it's still going to get value if you use it, if you redraw this card again. Um, definitely throw it out. The fact that this is free and it only costs two heroism you know, you could just toss it out, use it for EXP. And even if you don't need to bind someone, you just play the card for EXP. So that also goes into my EXP leveling build. So I don't want to give too much away, but <laughs> you guys will see where I'm getting at. So yeah, Symbio Bind plus Tendril Strike. Holy good googly moogly. That is a lot of draw card potential, giving Venom tons and tons of utility and card draw potential to the likes of a Captain America. But this is with the mods. This is with mods, not all on default. So now we've drawn a bunch of cards and one of those cards is assimilation this is the coolest legendary card in the game by far plus it has the freaking coolest animation venom's just crawling and he looks evil and oh my god it's amazing all venom attacks and heroics gain quick on ko draw a venom card draw a venom attack or heroic card until the end of turn and gain one ravenous and we've modified this to be free um now the downside putting free on here it no longer generates the two heroism as mentioned earlier he has so much heroism from the I'll sh you know from all the things that we're playing and i'll get into that in a little bit when we get to insatiable hunger um but free is the best choice because we're not using up a card play and not using card plays is great uh, especially if we're duplicating this card now we have two three four of them now we have ones for multiple waves and we could just go on a uh, on a tear uh we don't want to be using card plays on all four of them another Another interesting thing about assimilation let's say you do duplicate this with holy gift from hunter or using the effort maximizer select a hero generate a copy of each card in your on in your hand of theirs and discard the rest meaning if assimilation's in your hand it's going to duplicate it also nico is a great option double up generate a copy of each attack skill or heroic in your hand but it's only a one in three chance it'll actually be a heroic so it's a bit of a gamble with nico but she could definitely has the potential to do it so we have three amazing options to duplicate assimilation and trust me i make it happen every single mission i do not not duplicate assimilation and it's not actually hard or troublesome to fish for the cards that i need to be able to do it it's quite easy and i'll be showing that in my leveling guide giving you guys a step-by-step -step on how to fish for the cards and how i pull it so easily and how i duplicate it so easily so it's definitely doable and once you have multiples in your hand you can actually just eat one two three assimilation cards and it'll stack 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 meaning it's going to last three turns instead of one so if you want you can just pop them all off and now you have them until the end of the mission. Uh, I like to hold on to them because maybe I end up using Tendril Strike to draw another card that allows me to duplicate it again. And then I just duplicate it again. So it's always nice to hold on to one of them so you have the opportunity to, you know, possibly duplicate it one more time. And even if the mission's going to end, it's a free card. So if you duplicate a free card and use it and it's a legendary card, you get a tremendous amount of EXP. <laughs> so you want to duplicate it even if you don't need to. So yeah, assimilation's just gnarly. I mean, now all of our abilities become quick attacks right so lethal embrace is now a quick attack it's doing thousands of damage once we have strengthened overpowered ravenous uh crit it's just insane <laughs> the, the apex is doing double that damage now it's a quick attack and we're just every time we use this we get strengthened we're gonna be strengthened for the rest of the battle at this point the uh the mod on ko gain strengthened it's it's overkill we're getting so many stacks of strength and that we can't even use them all but we do need we do need that initial one strengthened no matter what so it's still the only place we can put it and we do need it it doesn't matter though even if you had like plus 50 percent damage on this card you wouldn't need the plus 50 percent damage on this card <laughs> that's my point so it's like there there is no mod that you need on this card because this card will one shot anything in the game once we've done assimilation we built up a ravenous our power and all that good stuff our tendril strike becomes quick which doesn't really matter but what's important is the all cards will now draw a venom card so what tendril strike does if you ko two minions 
happens, after popping Assimilation, it will draw two Venom cards and two other cards. This will draw four cards after playing Assimilation. Or if you use one on a minion and then the other to hit your Symbiote Bind, you're going to draw two Venom cards and one additional card. That's, that's the ideal way to go because you're getting more of Venom stuff and less padded stuff from your other heroes. That's the way I recommend using it. So this is getting out of hand because now we're drawing so many Venom cards that we're recycling all of the free cards and able to play them again, like our Symbiote Bind and our Insatiable Hunger. So let's talk about this. Insatiable Hunger, gain one Ravenous, gain one additional Ravenous at the start of each turn, whatever. We don't want to wait to the next turn. We want to beat the mission as fast as possible, unless it's a wave-based mission. This doesn't get value unless it's a wave-based mission. But the gain one Ravenous is nice, because we're losing Ravenous as we're playing cards. So this just kind of replenishes them and brings them back. This card is free by default. Any free car, it is extremely good value and extremely good EXP. I've modded this to be plus two heroism because it doesn't give heroism by default. This is one of the cards that we need to build up Venom's heroism. We are playing plenty of Tendril Strikes. We're drawing plenty of Lethal Embraces. We're playing all those cards to build up one heroism at a time with a Hunter doubling it. Those are two at a time. And then this with a Hunter doubling it, it's four every time you play this. So with the Hunter on the team, this becomes so, so much better. The second Insatiable Hunter does not have plus heroism on it. It has draw the last attack played, meaning we get to redraw our tendril strike, redraw our lethal embrace, which kills an enemy. And because we have assimilation, that means lethal embrace is also drawing venom cards, which will then draw a satiable hunger again. Then we pop a satiable hunger, get our lethal embrace back, and then we use that, and then we get our lethal insatiable hunger back. It's a never ending cycle of getting your free cards back, playing them and getting your other cards back. And holy moly, it's just like holy crap this character is unstoppable <laughs> this is incredible so i just found that you know two of them with uh, heroism i was getting too much heroism i i like being able to draw my tendril strike or whatever i used last and you could hold on to this card until you use the ability that you want to re redraw so there's a little bit of strategy with how you use this and you could hold on to this one maybe you're at full heroism then you use all of your heroic abilities you bind a bunch of guys use some tasty brains some devouring strikes now you're out of heroism pop this now you're back on full heroism <laughs> then you pop your insatiable hunger number two draw the cards that build up more heroism <laughs> It's just insane. This character is so insane. So uh, this is uh, this is a lot, right? Um, now, before we move on, Insatiable Hunger is one of those kind of ravenous building mechanics. This card was designed to go with his ravenous mechanic. There's another one. And we're, I'm just going to remove a card from my deck. Symbiotic Senses. This is what I was running early on instead of a second Insatiable Hunger. Draw one Venom attack or heroic card. The next two attack cards played do not consume Ravenous, and I modded it to be plus two heroism. This is actually a really great card, and I would recommend using it. The fact that it doesn't the next two attacks don't consume ravenous allows you to maintain your ravenous stacks it's really quite nice the problem is this costs you a card you can't you because it draws a venom card you can't mod this to be free so the chances are you can only ever play one or two of these in a given turn where insatiable hunger you could play like a dozen of them and if you play a dozen of these you're gonna gain back a dozen ravenous so if this is like free ravenous whereas this is very expensive not lose any ravenous and just drawing the one attack alone isn't that great when we're already drawing venom cards with symbiote bind and tendril strike and assimilation right this isn't really bringing much value the one reason that it did bring value and i did like it early on if it's one of the first cards you'd pull at the start of a mission it's like okay i get to draw a venom card it might be assimilation it might be tendril strike which is going to help me start fishing for more and it gives me an immediate for heroism and the next cards played are not going to consume my ravenous so it's like oh this is always like a good card to get things going and i still recommend putting one in your deck and i'll probably bring this back into my deck later on when i'm done leveling him and when some of the other ravenous mechanics are fixed 
that they're currently broken. So this is supposed to maintain ravenous stacks and it does actually work properly, but because the other skills aren't working properly, it counter outs, it counteracts this card, making this card lose value. So until they fix the bugs, this card is kind of useless to me now. And the quicker, more easy way to work around it is a insatiable hunger that gives plus two heroism. The, the other one was plus four heroism, but with a hunter, it doubles it. So it'd be plus eight. So this is half the value, but it's free and we can continuously redraw this because of assimilation, tendril strike, and all of that. So we're going to come across it so much more often. We're not using card plays. So it's like, I just have to play this free twice for it to have the same amount of value as symbiotic senses. So obviously I'm going to go the free route. <laughs> Plus free gives more EXP and it is an epic card. So I think it gives more EXP for that alone as well. So I like both of these insatiable about hungers doing something different. If you don't have a, a, a hunter that is double eight heroism, you might want to have both of these do plus two heroism. If you're lacking the heroism, make it so both of these give heroism instead of draw last attack played on the last one. Now, if you're looking at my build, pretty much every card is a unique card. The, the only thing that we double up on is Insatiable Hunger. And there is an argument to be ha said that we can remove Insatiable Hunger for Symbiotic Senses. Now we have eight unique cards in this deck. That's cool. We can also put in a Spike Burst and this is modded for plus one heroism for each KO, which is gonna make up for not having that extra insatiable hunger. Basically, if this is spike bursting and killing a whole group of enemies, you're gonna get one heroism for each one KO'd. It does cost two, but with that hunter on the team, it'll be plus two heroism for each KO, paying for the cost of the card with just a single kill, and then getting a bunch more for every s s uh, additional kill. Or you go spike burst plus 50% damage, which is probably the way that I would go if you're going to put this in the deck. Now, the one reason I don't put this in the deck is spike burst kills a bunch of enemies. Killing a bunch of enemies means you're losing potential of more EXP. If you have five enemies and you kill them all with one card, there, there's no more enemies to kill and you only got the EXP for playing one card. If you use a one card for each of those one of five enemies, you're playing five cards to kill five enemies and you're gaining five times the amount of EXP. Therefore, Spike Burst is only a kind of meta once you're level, if you're done leveling the hero. Then I would recommend putting it in the deck and I do recommend putting it in the deck if you are meta and you're done leveling the hero, just for that quickly get in there, murder everything, done with the mission, go. And that's what I really started to like about Venom. It's like, once we have Assimilation in there, we only need one of every card because we're drawing all of the cards all of the time. If there is a certain card that you need, you're going to get it. You're going to have all your Venom cards in your hand at all times. And the moment you lose them, you're going to re-get them back in your hand. So why would you ever want two of the same card in a Venom deck when he always has all of his cards in his hand? And that's what's really unique about Venom. You can have one of every card giving him the best variety out of any hero. So I thought that was just a nice thing to point out there. Now, we still have more cards to review, so let's move on to Taste brains. The mod that I put on here is minus one heroism. This is a three cost card, my normal, and we're reducing it down to two. The reason for that is you can't get plus 50% damage on this card because it's a, a heroic single target and um, there's really nothing else that's a good option. Why would you put quick on this? Why, or any, you could make it draw a card, but we don't need to. We're drawing too many cards. <laughs> so what this card does is it's lifesteal. Okay, nobody cares about that. He's, he's eating their brains, so he's stealing their life. So I guess they're just trying to be cute about it. On KO, the next Venom attack card played does not consume Ravenous. It doesn't work. <laughs> if you play Tasty Brains, the next card will still consume Ravenous. It's bugged. Great, great job testing your brand new hero. <laughs> it only took me one mission to figure out that that doesn't work. So yeah, hire some QA testers. <laughs> and it's still not fixed to this date at the time, at least at the time of me making this recording. What's worse, when you use Tasty Brains, you lose two Ravenous. That's not supposed to happen. I don't know why. Nothing in the game should give you minus two. At the most, it's minus one. So maybe the minus one heroism is bugging it out. I don't really know what the reason is, but that needs to get fixed as well. And because of that, we are kind of nuking our Ravenous rather quickly, and this card is not preventing us from losing. So most of the time, I'm probably just sitting at zero Ravenous, uh, hence to my point at the top of the video where it's a pretty crappy mechanic until I pop a bunch of insatiable hungers and build it back up and then immediately lose it again. So it's this up and down game and I just learned to not rely on it and we can make up for that 50% 
offense by just pumping 50 levels into Venom. <laughs> There. Now he has 50% more offense all the time, and we don't have to worry about Ravidus. We just put levels into him and, and made up for his crappy mechanic. Once this gets fixed, assuming it gets fixed, this has a lot of value because the next card played does not consume Ravidus. We're going to hold on to those stacks. That is the reason I'm putting it in the deck. We're putting it in there with the, the, the thought process that it will get fixed. And even when it does give you minus two Ravenous and it doesn't prevent the next card from giving losing Ravenous, it's still a good card. Um, now, if we compare this card to Devouring Strikes, which is our next attack, uh, this is a chain four on KO does not consume Ravenous. Also doesn't work. <laughs> and you might notice in some of my footage, I use Devouring Strike and I don't lose Ravenous. That is because I played a Symbiotic Senses first. Symbiotic Senses does work as intended and is not as bugged and it prevents the next attacks played, not consuming Ravenous. So in the times that Devouring Strike did not lose Ravenous, it's because I played that other card first. And I'm not running that in my current deck anymore. So I'm always losing Ravenous when I use Devouring Strike and I've tested this a hundred times. And every single time I kill one, two, three, four, five enemies with this, it's it still consumes Ravenous. I also think this is poorly designed. I think it should just give you one Ravenous for each KO because then you could just like, it's called Devouring Strike. Let me devour the brains of four enemies and just go Ravenous. Like, doesn't that just sound better? <laughs> like design your game, like you have all the words, Devouring Strike, Ravenous, and then you're just like deflating the whole thing. Let me devour everyone and go full Ravenous. That's how I think it should work. That, that would just be better in my opinion. So so the mod that I put on this is plus 50% damage based off your offense. So this card originally does like, I don't know, 80 damage. And we brought it up to 190 because our offense is 190. 50% of that is effectively almost 95 damage. So we've boosted this by 95 damage. Basically doubles the damage of the card, but it's a chain four. So you gotta remember, this is 200 damage plus Ravenous, bringing it up to 300 plus Strengthen, bringing it up to 400. If you go overpowered, that's 600, chain four, 1200, 1800, 2400 damage. This is the max potential of doing 2400 damage, which will in fact one shot anything in the game on ultimate three level 40 difficulty. It's pretty insane. And because it's a chain four, we can spread that out. We can kill one little guy, finish off another. I tend to use this as softening enemies. I'll kill something off, then soften up the rest and one of those enemies that I'm softening is somebody that's symbiote bound because I just get to draw a card. And because we do kill an enemy and we've already popped assimilation, we will draw another Venom card. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? More Venom cards, more insatiable hunger. <laughs> this gets crazy. So Devouring Strike, I just said how much damage it does there. Tasty Brains does 500 base damage. You know, with uh, Ravenous, 750, Strengthened, 1000, Overpowered, 1250? Or wait, sorry, 1500. Yeah, so the max potential of Tasty Brains is 1500, which is nowhere near as close as Devouring Strike. And Devouring Strike has the utility of spreading it out however you like. So why run a Tasty Brains? Well, because the fact that the next card played does not consume Ravidus. That's like a really good thing, which means if you play Tasty Brains first, the next card like your Tendril Strike won't consume Ravidus. Then you play a Devouring Strike. And if this was working properly, it also wouldn't consume Ravidus. Now we're in a spot where we're never losing our ravenous and the odd time that we do we use insatiable hunger to bring it back <laughs> so when these two cards get fixed which currently both of them are not working uh we will never ever run out of ravenous and we'll always be at max ravenous because insatiable hunger is ensuring that when we do lose it we're retopping ourselves back off so i like the tasty brains uh for the apex on here and because we're lowering the cost like i think we compared it like 1500 damage to 2400 damage i don't know what that is mathematically but it's doing like 30 percent less damage we just reduced its cost by 30 percent so now i think value wise it's worth the two heroism in comparison to that of a dire variant strike that costs one more um and that's where I, I kind of i think that mod is perfect for this card because it brings it to the cost that it should be when this is three cost you never really feel like you're getting as much value out of it as you do with devouring strike 
and I've tried running two Devouring Strikes in my deck, and it's kind of pointless, because you have two in your hand, you use one, you pop Insatiable Hunger, or you kill something, and you just draw a Devouring Strike again. You're, you're going to have the second Devouring Strike in your hand after immediately playing it, because you're drawing a Venom card, which you're just going to redraw Devouring Strike before you even have a chance to use the other one that's still in your hand. There's really no point in having two of the same cards, which I mentioned earlier. And Tasty Brains has a good effect. In the long run, when things get fixed, Ravenous mechanic, uh, we can ignore it. We're always going to be at 50%. And then suddenly, Ravenous isn't like the worst mechanic in the world, but it still only provides 50% damage. Compared to Captain Marvel, Hulk, and all the other characters, like I said at the top of the video, it's also not that great. Boom. Wow. That is a lot of talking. <laughs> there are a lot of points to make there. Um, and that is a look at all of Venom's abilities right there. Let's go to the Forge, like we always do, and talk about whatever remaining abilities he has that we haven't reviewed. So what haven't we looked at here? Web Toss. Hello. So upgrade this just becomes forceful knockback in any direction. That's it. Web Toss is a garbage card. Why? It doesn't have damage on it. Why would they, like, this is just the worst design in the world. Why would you have a ravenous mechanic that increases damage, then give him a card that doesn't do damage? <laughs> I suppose you could mod this to be plus 50% damage based off your offense, and then once you go use your legendary card, this becomes quick as well and draws a card. So, mm, we were talking about how we have room for one card in our deck. If we mod this to be plus 50% damage. Once we played Assimilation, uh, there's, 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 it's kind of okay, assuming you've played Assimilation, but until you've discovered his legendary ability and, and uh, it's just like, it, it doesn't really play with Ravenous that well. Knockback in any direction is crazy good, especially forceful. You could grab a minion, throw them into your ally, that minion dies, uh, so... Yeah, once we've played Assimilation, that means he's going to draw a Venom card because it died. You threw him into your ally, so that means you're going to draw a card. Um, you could throw them into your Symbiote Bind, meaning you'll draw two Venom cards. I think Web Toss has an argument to be made where it's not too garbage if we mod it with plus 50% attack and we only use it after we've used Assimilation. And I did say we have room in our deck to remove one Insatiable Hunger for something else. This could be that something else. I've convinced myself that this isn't so bad at this very moment. <laughs> but it was horrible, horrible card up until we got the Legendary ability, um, and it does not play with the Ravenous at all. Um, oh yeah, the, another thing to mention here, it says, unusable on grounded targets. I was like, what? Like, all cards that have knockback in any direction, none of them say that except for this one. So I think it's trying to tell you, like, you can't use this on your symbiote bind, guys. And it's like, this would have been way cooler if it said usable on grounded targets. So we could throw our symbiote binded guy around the map. Boom, now we're working. And why wouldn't you be able to do that? The symbiote on the ground is part of Venom. He shoots his hand over, sucks it all up, plus the enemy, throws them across the map, and re-sticks them somewhere else. Boom, now we're cooking. Again, design your character better. <laughs> Hire me. <laughs> And I guess the only th other thing that we looked at was Spike Burst, and we kind of covered that. So, yeah, the only card that we didn't really cover was Web Toss, oddly enough. So, yeah, basically I'm using every single card that is available to him in my deck other than Spike Burst and Web Toss, I guess. Because sometimes Symbiote Senses make sense to bring in. And uh, you could even argue that you could bring in a Spike Burst or a Web Toss instead of a second Insatiable Hunger, making Venom the most diverse hero that basically uses one of everything in his kit. I did mention at the top of the video that his cards were pretty underwhelming at first, and that still stands true. Like, a lot of these cards aren't that great. They're all playing into, you know, not consuming Ravenous or building up Ravenous or not doing this and Ravenous isn't that good. So you're playing a lot of cards to maintain something that's not that great to begin with. Um, but then it's like, it doesn't even matter because once you play Simulation, all those somewhat crappy cards gain quick draw a Venom card. Two of the best mods that you could possibly put in the game are on all of those cards. Plus you now get to also mod those cards with something extra. So it's like now every single card in the game has three mods 
it doesn't matter if things are all orientated towards you know building up ravenous stacks or not consuming ravenous stacks because we that's just a bonus it's just a bonus at this point and that's what i was saying at the top of the video that this assimilation card makes all of his abilities synergize together so it's like he pretty much all of these cards feel like they're not really working they're kind of hard to juggle they're not really meshing together that well or they're kind of costly and i can't find a good way to mod them boom as soon as you get this card they all work perfectly together and it's like okay um it's 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 kind of like a cheap way out it's like it doesn't feel like a really great design in that way that everything is relying on one card uh i just think everything should work together quite naturally and then this should just make them better so and you know the cards aren't bad they're just not great because if we look at things like web toss for example knock back in any direction right look at uh look at uh ghost riders forceful knockback in any direction the exact same card but this one has quick on it and then we can bot it to draw a card this is like 100 times better look at symbiote senses draw one venom card prevents the next two attacks from not consuming ravenous look at wolverine's berserk draw three cards gain lifesteal Lifesteal being quite similar to that of the not losing Ravenous stacks, but it's drawing three cards. So again, like a lot of Venom cards, if you compare like similar cards to other heroes, they're just like not nearly as good. They're putting so much weight on the saving Ravenous stacks that they're like, we have to make this card not as good because it, it doesn't consume Ravenous stacks. And it's like, well, who cares? Ravenous isn't that good to begin with. So it's like this card should be drawing three cards like Wolverines to be somewhat good and it should still do the 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 ravenous thing um i think at the very least this should draw two cards and then maybe it the next two cards don't consume ravenous and it gives you some ravenous because if you're already low on ravenous then this isn't really helping you like in the case for example if you have zero ravenous and then you use this your next cards are not consuming ravenous but they they also can't because you don't have any but they <laughs> you're still going to be using stacks of this so you're not rebuilding ravenous in any way you're out you're depleted so this should help you both rebuild your ravenous stacks but prevent them from being lost to make this somewhat valuable so yeah again like we can pretty much compare any card that's like a chain four attack with this we look at wolverines eviscerate chain four taunt if an enemy is ko'd gain a counter okay it's it's similar to that of wolverines ah but this one costs three heroism so then again wolverines is better <laughs> and you guys get my point you get where i'm going with it like spike burst you compare that to supernova on captain marvel hers is cheaper does more damage yeah so yeah if you if you compared every single card in his deck to another hero's card that's pretty much the exact same his always ends up being more expensive or doing less and not as good however assimilation changes all of that because now all those cards also have quick and draw a card so again you know i just think they should have designed the cards better <laughs> I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, so why don't we go on to battle items. So I like to run a utility belt, a effort maximizer, and this uh, generate a copy of each of the, the, the hero's cards in your hand, discard the rest. In the case that I need to duplicate my assimilation and I need to do it now, uh, I could use an effort maximizer to do that and then we're good to go. Utility Belt is gonna help me sift for Venom's assimilation or use it on Doctor Strange to sift for uh, Astral Meditation or use it on my Hunter to sift for um, the Holy Gift. And last but not least, if I'm bringing Doctor Strange, I like to bring the Major Strength Tonic and that gives the Venom overpowered, which gives him 100% more offense. That's pretty awesome. Um, we stack that with Strengthen, that's 150. We stack that with uh, Ravenous, and now he's at 200% more offense. If he's currently at 200, we're bringing him up to what? 600 offense. That's crazy good. But we need to be able to restore this Major Strength Tonic with Astral Meditation from Doctor Strange. If we're going to bring this, we have to bring Strange. Because this has to be crafted at the Cauldron, and it's very ex you have a very finite amount of resources to do that. And that's it for battle items. And heroes best synergized with, it's obviously going to be Doctor Strange, so we could restore those overpowered uh, abilities. Plus, I really like, I'll just quickly show you my Strange build here. Um, uh, Astro Meditation, Blessing of Vishanti. We're going to buff all of our Venom cards to have plus 90 damage for the rest of the mission. We have two of them, so pretty much all of Venom's cards are going to get buffed. Plus, if you get the combo card for Venom Strange, it's like when you use the combo card, the, the hero combo, it's going to give all of the cards 
cards in your hand like plus 400 damage. Uh, what? That's crazy good. So that's another reason why Strange is also good because his hero combo card, Aphex, is bananas. And Crimson's Bands of Sidorak are really good as well because this is a free card and uh, it has one vulnerability. So we could just we could just use this to vulnerable some of the bigger units that Venom might just be lacking a little bit of strength to take out. Now he for sure has enough. And if this is like in your hand, it's a free card. So we could just get rid of it, shrinking our hand size. Because I said we have too many cards in our hand. It becomes a problem. And, and it's like, well, free, 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 free. So pretty much any Doctor Strange card that gets pulled we could just get rid of it by playing it and that's great and winds of a tomb it's great to have it has on ko draw two cards and if you knock it into an alley that will be three cards so what i'm doing with this build is uh if this is one of the first cards in my hand i could use this to fish for more cards such as our astral meditation or our venom cards that um you know our assimilation our hunter cards such as our holy gift to duplicate assimilation or our call to arms to double the amount of heroism that we're gaining so venom has enough heroism to play all of his cards so quickly looking at my hunter build for venom uh holy spark both of them are on ko draw two cards so we could just take out a minion with this to draw two cards great bands of fire same thing knock back any direction on ko draw card so because it's a knock back in any direction we're gonna knock back a minion into um venom or into venom's symbiote bind because doing that will force it to draw Venom card. So that'll be like on KO draw a card plus a Venom card. That's going to help us fish for assimilation or fish for more holy gifts or astral meditations, uh, blessings of Vishantis and all that stuff. So again, with her, it's like free, free, draw card, draw card, draw card. All this stuff is fishing, 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 fishing. Um, and now the bonus thing is, uh, is her passives. So we got the master of the hunt, reduce all collar thresholds by one. And that collar threshold would be the um, the next light card played is free. And you only have to play four to, to use this. Basically, we get to play our holy gift for free. Free. You cannot mod this card to be free, and this card does cost a card play. So the chance that we get to pop our Paragon Collar off to play this for free, it just saves us a card play. It's great. It's nice. So that is my ultimate combo for Venom. It's Doctor Strange and Hunter, but Venom technically doesn't really need any mark supports because you're gonna get assimilation immediately on your first turn, quite quickly. You can fish for it super quickly with Hunter on your team with all her fishing cards. And then from there, everything is quick attack. You don't need to mark anything that when you kill something with quick attack, it refunds the card play anyways. You're getting zero value out of marking targets. So yeah, you don't need a mark support on your team with Venom. So all you need is someone that can fish for cards or bring some other value. And the other two heroes that do that best are Doctor Strange and Hunter. So the only other arguments I would make is like Captain America with certain builds. He does just crazy amount of card draw. He's going to help fish. He can make things vulnerable depending on the build that you're using on him. Same with Iron Man. He can do a lot of buffy stuff. He can double heroism. He can, you know, refund card plays. He's good at fishing for cards. He can uh, apply vulnerability to enemies and that sort of thing. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Nico. Nico. Obviously Nico. Nico's also going to be a great one. So we could also bring Nico if we want because she could duplicate his cards, which is going to be great duplicating Venom's cards. And even though he has limited potential, I'll show you guys this real quick here. It doesn't matter anymore. If there's any mission that we want to go on, we could just change the leader now with the Whisper Web. So it's like, I want to go on this mission, but it's assigned to Hulk. You know, change the leader, change it to Venom. Perfect. Good to go. So if we're looking through this, you know, we have we can go on the strange mission. Obviously, there's no missions for Hunter. So we're just going to look for strange and Venom. So there's only one mission that we can do right now, which is the Doctor Strange mission. But if we just take any mission that we really want to do and in the top right hand corner, change the leader to Venom, this this just changes everything. So no matter what, there's going to be one. See, there's no mission here available for Venom, but there's at least one or two missions available for changing the leader to Venom. So you don't really need anyone else other than Strange, Hunter, and Venom because there's always going to be a mission available that we could change the leader to that of which uh, of Venom. So you're good to go. 
Anyways, boom. I have talked and talked and talked and talked a lot. There has been a lot to go through with Venom, more so than any other hero in the game thus far. Um, there's just so much uh, things to go over. Uh, I went into them at nauseum here. So I'm pretty much talked out. I need some water, a coffee, and uh, that's everything I have to say about Venom. I, he went from zero to hero. I absolutely love him now. Assimilation is freaking broken. You've seen from my footage how good he is. Again, that footage was like me at like level 30 champion level, maybe even just level one champion. All that footage I got while I was leveling him up, then I stopped getting footage and I just went full focus on trying to level him up. I'm, I'm curious to see what I can showcase in a future video for how much damage he's doing and if I even need the overpowered buff. So I'm going to try to get him to level 100 and then I have a video coming up for how I level Venom quickly. Little tips and tricks and we're going to do like a step by step turn based like this is how I fish for his ability or this is how I, you know, and this is how I approach it. This is how I kill enemies. This is how I spam abilities. This is how I can min max value. So that video definitely needs to be all on its own um, and we're gonna go into special detail there and in that video you'll definitely see me doing full damage at level 100 because I'm gonna be playing and talking at the same time so there's gonna be uh, updated footage for his damage numbers whereas a lot of the stuff you guys saw in today's video was where he was at a much much lower level um, but I think that I've mar I have this like little thing that I do where I mark footage as like, okay, good, amazing, and insanity. And I've marked every single bit of footage that you guys saw as insanity. So it's like, do I need him to do more damage? <laughs> is, is the footage not impressive enough? <laughs> so the fact that he's higher level now, it, it, my footage would just be more impressive. So hopefully in the, the guide that I do for you guys, we can get some more impressive damage numbers. So stay tuned to that. Um, if you're watching this in the future, the link to that video should already be in the playlist in the description below. So check that out. Boom. There you guys go. I'm all talked out. Tell me what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in my Venom leveling guide, and then possibly in, uh, in my Hunter guide. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye now.